In previous videos, we have looked at all sorts of graphs. Yeah, we've looked at functions and uh, what they look like if we graph them. If you can remember, reciprocal graphs, we've done exponential graphs, cubic, quadratic graphs, linear graphs. Uh, so please check my site, explainingmaths.com, uh, to learn more about it. So now it's time to have a look at graphs in real life situations, yeah? Because graphs are being used all of the time. They're super, super useful. And first of all, we're gonna have a look at conversion graphs. And after these conversion graphs, we're gonna have a look at distance time, speed time, and acceleration time graphs, okay? Now, what is going on here? A conversion graph. Let's say this represents what you have to pay when you take a taxi. And as you can see, horizontally, I have the distance in kilometers from zero up to seven, and vertically I have the price in dollars uh, where each block is or uh, represents two dollars. Yeah, and then you're going to answer questions similar to the three that I just created. What is the price of a six-kilometer journey? Tom needs to travel three kilometers and has six dollars. Will he have enough money? And explain the y-intercept and gradient of the graph. Okay. Well, let's start at the beginning. What is the price of a six kilometer journey? So I think we all already realized, what do we need to do? Let me take a marker. We go to six kilometers and then we find out the price. And the best way to do that is to take a sharp pencil and a ruler and to draw that dotted line to your graph, okay? And then you draw horizontally a dollar line to your y x and your vertical x and then you can see oh how much do i have to pay i have to pay eight dollars and now you show everybody that you've used your conversion graph to answer that question so the answer there is going to be eight dollars if we continue it says well tom needs to travel three kilometers and has six dollars does he have enough well let's find out three kilometers where is that three kilometers over here and as you can see, if he has six dollars in his pocket, will he have enough? Well, the price is going to be less than six. It is going to be five, actually. So yes, he will have enough money. Yeah. Uh, perhaps they can ask you how much change will he receive or whatever. But in this case, it will be just yes, he has enough money. Okay. He can even buy an ice cream after paying the taxi fare. And now thirdly, we have to explain the y-intercept and the gradient of the graph. Yeah, and where gradient is the steepness and the y-intercept is where does it cut the y. So, and I just wanna, wanna, wanna talk about those two uh, concepts because that's important. The y-intercept, what does that mean? Yeah, it starts at $2. So even if I don't travel, I have to pay $2. What does that mean? Well, hopefully if you, uh, well, anybody who has taken a taxi in the past, um, realizes that when you enter the taxi it always has like a start fare right so it starts at a particular amount and then for each kilometer you pay extra okay so when you take this taxi you'll have to pay two dollars anyway yeah so that is what that y intercept represents now what about the gradient as you know uh, and otherwise check my site explainingmaths.com where i explain it but as you know gradient means if I go one step to the right, how many steps do I go up to be on my graph? And that is, that is the concept of gradient. So for this conversion graph, that means the gradient is how much money will be added on my bill if I travel one kilometer, yeah? So the gradient is the amount of money you have to pay for each extra kilometer you drive in that taxi. Okay, conversion graphs, explainingmaths.com. Go to my next video. We're going to create our own conversion graph or go to my site explainingmaths.com for more resources and you can also ask me a question there. Like and share this guys if it was useful so I can help your friends too. Yeah, that's a nice thing to do. Thank you very much and I'll see you later. Bye bye.